What's going on guys? My name is John Elder from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at icons, images, and exit buttons using Kinter and Python. All right, in the last video, we finished up our calculator app. Now we're going to build lots of other apps throughout this course. But right now I want to switch gears back to just learning straight Kinter functionality. So in this video, we're going to look at adding icons to our programs adding images and adding exit buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we finished up our calculator app. Let's create a new file. And I just put the basic, you know, Kinter startup code that we've always used. And let's go ahead and See, save this as, what do we want to save this as? Doesn't really matter. Let's just call it images. Okay. So first thing you'll notice, I put the title as learn to code economy.com, put whatever you want. So now the first thing we want to do is add an icon. And by icon, let's see, can we just run this real quick? So let's go Python. What do we call this? Images.py. So right now, this little feather, that's an icon, right? That's the little the little image that's up at the top of every program you've ever seen. So here's our goo, our uh, terminal thing, there's a little icon up there. Here's our sublime text editor, there's a little icon up there. All Windows type programs have little icons at the top. So how do we do that? Well, I've taken an icon, which is a, an ICO file, .ico. It's basically a PNG file that's usually like 16 by 16 in width and in height or 32 by 32 or 64 by 64. It's, you know, it's a square thing. And uh, you, use it, you create them using Photoshop or whatever. I'm not going to talk about how to create them in this video. I'm going to assume you have one and you're ready to use it. So how do you use it? Well, it's pretty easy. Just right up here at the top. I like to put it right underneath the title. Let's just go root dot icon bitmap, B-I-T-M-A-P. All right, so that's what we're calling an icon bitmap. And then you just pass into the parameters the location of the file. Now I'm going to put this, mine is in C, uh, let's see, you know, forward slash GUI. I put it in the same directory and I called it codemy.ico. Remember, these are icon files. So if we save this and run it, and let's pull it over. You can see now we have the little Codemy icon. This is the same icon that I use on my Codemy website. Uh, on the website, it's called a favicon. In real life, using programs like this, it's called just an icon. So very, very simple, very, very easy to do. And uh, that's that. So what else do we want to do? Let's now very quickly talk about uh, an exit button. I'm not sure if we looked at this earlier, but it's really easy. Let's just create a button like we've always done. I'm going to call it button quit. And it's going to be a button. And we want to, whoops, where do we go? And we want to put it on our root thing. And then the text for this, I'm just going to type uh, exit program. All right. And now the command is root dot quit. So root is obviously this root instance of this TK class that we've created. Anytime we do anything, we, we call root, right? You just throw a root.quit. Python is an object-oriented language, so we can do object-oriented things like putting a dot and then some other thing on it. So that's how you do that. So now we can just go uh, button quit dot. Let's just pack it in there. All right, so let's save this and run it. Boom. Grab it and pull it over. So we have, you know, just this one little button. And if we click it, boom, the program ends. Very, very simple, very straightforward. So that's all I'll say about that. Let's push this down to the bottom here. Now I want to talk about using images and using images. At first, it's a little tricky because you have to import some things and you have to do some stuff. So Kinter has a built in system for using images and you don't have to import anything. You could just do it, but it only supports two image types, uh, GIF, GIF, which nobody uses anymore and some other thing that I don't even remember, PNM or something like that. It doesn't matter, it's an obsolete image, you're never gonna use it. So to use real images like JPEGs 
or PNG files, we have to import a whole other module and then do some a little bit of voodoo. So the thing we need is called PIL, and PIL stands for Python Image Library. And it's old, and it doesn't really work anymore. So there's a new one called Pillow. It's a fork of Pill that they improved upon. So we're going to use Pillow, and we need to install Pillow, but we'll reference it here as PIL. I'm not sure why that is. It's kind of weird. So you would think it would be from Pillow, import, and then the thing, but it's not. It is from capital P, capital I, capital L. And we want to import image TK. There you go, capital T, lowercase k, and also image. Oops, image. Okay, so that's how we reference it, but we have to still now install this on our system. So we do that on the command line, and we install this like we install anything. I'm going to go pip install. Pip is the Python package manager thing. Right, it comes with Python. And if this doesn't work, it means you didn't install Python correctly when you installed Python. When you install Python, there's a little screen that pops up right at the beginning that says uh, add Python to path, and you need to check that box. If you didn't, pip won't work. If you did, pip will work. So if this doesn't work for you, you're going to have to uninstall Python, go back and reinstall it, and check that box. Or you can Google how to add Python to path windows, and um, you know, you'll see a tutorial on how to do it manually. So pip install, and we want to install pillow, P-I-L-L-O-W, capital P, I think. Yeah. So I've already installed it, so I'm getting a thing that says it's already been installed. You will get something else that shows it installing, a little thing will pop up on the screen, like, you know, downloading type deal. So we can make sure this has been installed by running pip, uh, pip freeze, F-R-E-E-Z-E. -E -E. And if we look through here, all those things I have installed, there is Pillow right there. So, okay, so that seems to work. Let's clear the screen here. So now we've installed it. We're referencing it from our program here. How do we actually use this thing? Well, it's a little bit more complicated than normal, but just this is like one extra step. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to create an image. I'm going to call it image IMG, or let's just call it my IMG, right? And it's going to be an image TK dot photo image, right? So that's sort of similar things we've seen before, like with button, we call the button. Well, here we're calling the image TK because that's this thing here. And then inside of that, we're calling dot photo image, right? So in here, we want to go image dot open, because we're going to open the image, and then just pass in whatever your thing is. Now, I have a, a picture called aspen.png, and I uh, copied it to our GUI directory. So if we pull this up, so this is the directory where we've been saving all our Kinter files in, right? So here's that icon that I saved. I saved it into this folder. And here's Aspen. I saved it into this folder. So since it's in this folder, I don't have to put this stuff on there. In fact, I really don't need to put this stuff there either. I just did it to show you. So since it's in the same file or in the same folder as the program, we could just leave it like this. So, right, usually everything in Kinter is a two-step process. We define the thing and then we put the thing on the screen. So this is a three-step three step process. We define the image and then we put the image in something else and then we put that something else on the screen. So you can add images to just about every widget in Kinter, I think. I think you can add them like to buttons, make them the background of a button, of a text box, a text box of anything. So I'm just going to use, um, I'm just going to call this my label. We create a, a little label and set this equal to a label. We've done this before. And then inside of here, it's a little bit different. We're just going to go image equals and then my, oops, my image, right? So now we've sort of defined this label. Now we need to just put this label up on the screen. So we can go uh, my, oops, my label dot pack, pack it up there. Okay, and that should work. So let's go ahead and run this guy. Oops. There we go. And it worked. Here we go. This is a picture of me and my husky Aspen. She is a hurricane. <laughs> 
And that's pretty cool. So it's just that easy to add images to your, uh, your program. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codingme.com and we'll see you in the next video.